Welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this video, we are going to learn how to calculate inverse of a matrix. We will discuss terms such as adjoint of a matrix, cofactors, and determinants. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to part 3 of our multi-part lecture series on the topic of matrix, which is a subsection of mathematics. This lecture is focused on matrix inverse, and in order to learn how to calculate the inverse of a matrix, we need to learn what its determinant is, how we can calculate its adjoint and cofactors. So a very quick review of the previous lecture, we defined the matrix, elements of a matrix, its dimensions, rank of a matrix, and we also discussed identity matrix. After that, we dived into matrix operations. We looked at addition and subtraction, requirements for addition and subtraction, that is the two matrices have to have same dimensions. Then we discussed matrix multiplication, that the number of columns in the first matrix should be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. And then we also looked at transpose of matrix and did a bunch of practice problems in order to understand these concepts. In this lecture, we will start our discussion with inverse of a matrix. So what is an inverse of a matrix? In very simple terms, if you have a constant, and this is just for explanation purposes, and you multiply that constant with its reciprocal, you will end up with one. Okay, so if I have two, I multiply two with one by two, it is equal to one. Sometimes one by two can also be expressed as two raised to power minus one. And in very simple terms, that's exactly what the inverse of a matrix does. When you multiply the inverse of a matrix with the matrix itself, you're going to end up with the identity matrix, which we reviewed in the last lecture. And more formally, in order to calculate the inverse of a matrix, we have to calculate two additional uh, details, essentially. The first one being the adjoint of the matrix and the second one being the determinant of the matrix. So let's start with the determinant. What is the determinant of a matrix? Determinant of a matrix is a scalar that is a numeric value. It is indicated as follows. So you have the matrix and you have the two sidebars and it is calculated from the entries of a square matrix. Okay. So we have to have a square matrix in order to calculate the determinant and um, the identity matrix as well as you know is a square matrix. So this operation is only valid for square matrix, matrix where the number of rows and columns are equal. And it is used to calculate the inverse of a matrix. It helps us in understanding its properties. So as I mentioned over here, in order to calculate the inverse of a matrix, you need to be able to calculate the determinant of the matrix. For a two by two matrix, if the matrix is A1, A2, B1, B2, Okay, so this is the matrix and in order to calculate its determinant, we are going to put these uh, bars beside it to indicate that we're calculating the determinant and it is simply um, calculated or found by multiplying A1 with B2 and subtracting A2 times B1 from it. Okay, so the arrows basically go like this. So you have A1 times B2, A1, B2 minus B1, A2, or A2, B1, doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's for a two by two matrix. What about a three by three matrix? In the case of a three by three matrix, and these formulas you don't need to memorize, they're all provided in the NCS FE reference handbook. So for a three by three matrix, it's a little bit different. Um, the trick that I use is, and you can use the formula right away, but the trick that I use is that, okay, I start with the first one. So I will write A1 and I will basically calculate the cofactor and more details. We'll go through several practice problems uh, to calculate cofactor. So basically I am calculating this, right? So I have A1 times B2 times C3. So B2 times C3 minus C2 times B3, okay? For the second cofactor, I will basically have a negative sign, and I'll explain this to you later on, but minus A2 times, again, so 
now I'm looking at this one. So I will add a negative sign over here because the first entry is one one and the second entry is one two and the third entry is one three. So this is even so that's why I kept a positive sign or I didn't include a sign. But the second entry a two is actually odd. So that's why there's a negative sign. So negative a two times b one times c three minus b3 times c1 okay so you can see i'm basically building this up and for a3 it will basically be a3 so i'm going to hide this column and this row and i'm going to write a3 there's a plus sign beside it because three this entry corresponds to one three which is one plus three is equal to four which is even and simply b1 times c2 minus b2 times c1 and when you combine all of those together you'll see that it ends up in this uh, formula and you can use the formula that is directly provided in the ncsf reference handbook as well and when you rearrange these forms so you combine a1 and a1 you combine a2 and a2 and a3 and a3 you will end up with this and the the easiest thing is that your calculator would be able to calculate the determinant but if you want to be able to do this by hand which i highly advise you to know how to do it then uh, using these formulas is also fairly simple and straightforward adjoint of a matrix adjoint of a matrix is the transpose of the cofactor matrix of a now this is a mouthful and i am going to actually explain you the adjoint of a matrix by means of multiple examples so don't be worried because when we go through the practice problems by the end of it you would have a good understanding of a joint of a matrix right now i'm just presenting the definition and the same is true for the cofactor of a matrix i'm presenting the definition over here and we are going to calculate a lot of cofactors in this lecture so that by the time you're done with this lecture you will have a good understanding of cofactors so for this the definition cofactor is the determinant obtained by deleting the row and column of a given element of a matrix and what i actually did over here was calculation of the cofactor okay so when i was looking at a1 i actually deleted the row and the column and i calculated b2 times c3 minus c2 times b3 okay and then i basically um, had a positive sign for this one because this was the first entry was one one which is e1 so we're going to go through a lot of practice problems so don't worry and the odd entries as i mentioned in the case of one two one plus two is equal to three so it's an odd entry that's why i had a negative sign for a2 let us now go through some practice problems on the topic of inverse of matrix and hopefully after going through these practice problems you will have a better understanding of the definitions that we just discussed. So we are going to consider this matrix for these problems and let's start with problem number one. The problem number one is asking us to determine the determinant of this given matrix. For a two by two matrix as we saw earlier determinant can be simply calculated by multiplying a1 with b2 and subtracting a2 times b1 from it. So in our case, we have, this will basically result in one times five, okay, one times five minus three times two. And that will give us one number, okay, a scalar number. So five minus six is equal to minus one. Determinant is just one number, it's not a matrix. So this is our determinant for the given matrix. Problem number two is asking us to find the adjoint of the given matrix. Now, when we are dealing with a two by two matrix, in order to calculate the adjoint, what we basically do is we swap the entries that are on the diagonal of the matrix. So we have one and five. So I'm going to switch it to five and one like this. And for the off diagonal items that do not lie on the diagonal, I'm just going to change the signs. So these two are positive right now. I'm going to switch them to minus two and minus three. If they were minus two and minus three already, I would basically switch them to plus two and plus three. And this is basically the adjoint of a two by two matrix. Very simple and straightforward. Just swap the entries on the, on the diagonal and change the signs of the off diagonal items. Problem number three is asking us to determine the inverse of the matrix. Inverse of the matrix, as we saw earlier, is equal to the adjoint divided by the determinant. So this is the adjoint that we calculated. 
and we will divide it by the determinant which is minus 1 so I will have 5 divided by minus 1 minus 2 divided by minus 1 minus 3 divided by minus 1 and 1 divided by minus 1 so I'll end up with minus 5 3 2 and minus 1 so this is the inverse of this matrix now I would recommend you to actually go ahead and multiply these two matrices okay so this is a and this is a inverse and when you multiply these two matrices you will find that your answer would basically be equal to the identity matrix a two by two identity matrix which is this problem number four is asking us to find the transpose of matrix a this is a quick recap of something that we have seen earlier so transpose of matrix a basically will involve converting the rows into columns so i'm going to take one two the column and translate that into a row three five column and translate that into a row as well so this is the transpose of the given matrix the matrix that we were just dealing with was a two by two matrix and calculation of determinant and calculation of adjoint and inverse was pretty simple and straightforward now we are dealing with a three by three matrix okay it's a slightly bigger matrix and the calculations are pretty simple and straightforward they're just more tedious okay and if you're doing it with calculator it doesn't really matter because if you know how to use your calculator and you will basically find the video at the end of the lectures as well so you will not be making any mistakes hopefully if you're punching the numbers correctly but we still want to be able to do all of these calculations by hand so that we understand the basics so in this the next four problems for the next four problems we are given this three by three matrix and problem number five is asking us to calculate the determinant of this matrix for a three by three matrix as we saw earlier determinant can be calculated by making use of this formula that is provided in ncsf reference handbook you just have to be very careful about what your a1 is what your b2 is what your c3 is so on and so forth so this is a1 this is a2 this is a3 b1 b2 b3 and c1 c2 and c3 so when you carefully substitute those values in here you will be able to use these one of these two formulas so this is the second formula that i derived for you and the first formula is given in the ncsf reference handbook when you punch in these um, uh, values of a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 and c1 c2 c3 in this formula you will end up with the determinant of the matrix so over here you can see that i'm actually making use of this formula and simply substituting the values in here you're going to end up with a determinant value of minus four i would recommend you go through this because as i said the calculations are simple and straightforward but they're tedious and there are many places in here where you can you end up with a wrong answer because you might have solved the value or the sign okay that's why double checking especially for a three by three matrix your determinant value as well as the inverse value um, is is very important problem number six is asking us to determine the transpose of the given matrix and this is the same matrix for which we have already calculated the determinant by now we have done a few of these transpose problems so it should be fairly simple and straightforward the reason i'm doing this again is because we need to be able to determine the transpose of this given matrix in order to calculate its joint at joint so transpose i will basically take this column i'm going to convert this into a row i will take this column and convert this into a row and this column and convert this into a row and this is the transpose of the given matrix problem number seven is asking us to find the adjoint of the given matrix you can find the definition of adjoint of a matrix in ncsf reference handbook adjoint is determined by finding the cofactor matrix of the transpose matrix and again this sounds pretty complicated but it is not that complicated so we've already calculated the transpose of the matrix and we are going to now find the cofactors so this is what we are going to do okay so we are going to make use of this particular matrix and find essentially the determinants in the form of a two by two matrix so we are going to find um, so this is a three by three matrix it has nine entries so the cofactors will also comprise of nine entries okay so the cofactor a11 will basically we are going to delete this column and the row so this is a11 okay and then we will calculate 2 multiplied by 1 minus 5 multiplied by 3 or 3 multiplied by 5 okay so we will do this and we will end up with this value a12 
is going to be calculated using the same approach we are going so this is a12 okay so we're going to delete the row and the column and we are left with two three three and one okay two three and three and one so we will multiply two by one and subtract three by three from it so two minus nine which is minus seven and when you look at a13 which is this we are going to mask this and we will calculate 2 multiplied by 5 minus 3 multiplied by 2 so 10 minus 6 will give you 4 and we will continue this process for the second row as well so this entry is a21 a21 would basically correspond to this so we will delete the row and the column and we have minus 1 1 5 and 4 we will end up with this and keep doing the same process so we have over here a22 this is a central entry and we are left with 1 3 4 and 1 so 1 3 4 and 1 1 times 1 minus 4 times 3 you end up with minus 11 and then you have this entry which is 2 3 delete the row delete the column you're left with 1 uh, 5 uh, 3 minus 1 I'm not mentioning in the same order but you get the idea so it is 5 minus minus 3 which is 5 plus 3 you end up with 8 and then you repeat the process with a31 which is this delete the row and delete the column you end up with this so minus 1 3 2 4 minus 1 times 3 is minus 3 minus 2 times 4 is minus 8 and you end up with this a32 is this entry delete the row and delete the column so I have 1 times 3 minus 2 times 4 this is 3 minus 8 and then the last one is a33 which is 1 times 2 minus minus 1 times 2 which is 2 plus 2 which is 4 so we have calculated all of these values and I'm going to explain you how to deal with the polarities of the signs so adjoint of a is equal to the cofactor matrix of the transpose matrix okay so we have calculated all of these entries which you can see is a lot of hard work so the one thing that I left for the end and I briefly mentioned it in the beginning of the lecture is the sign so whenever you have the sum of the location resulting in an even number it's going to be positive okay and whenever so for example one two it results in three three is odd number so you're going to add negative okay you're going to add negative to whatever you have calculated for a12 one three results in one plus three is equal to four it is a positive number so i'll leave this as positive right and you keep on going through this process two one it would be negative two two will be positive two three will be negative and so on and so forth so what you're going to going to do is you're going to add negative for a12 which results in negative negative seven which is seven okay the value for a11 you're going to take it as is because you have a positive sign so plus minus 13 will still be negative 13 okay and for a13 it is a plus so you're going to take that value as is okay and repeat the same process 2 1 is a negative because it, you have to add a negative to it because it's going to result in an odd number so minus minus 21 is actually plus 21 that's why you have this plus 21 and 22 and so on and so forth so this matrix that you end up with after adjusting for the signs is the adjoint matrix of the given 3 by 3 matrix alternatively we can also calculate the adjoint by first of all finding the cofactors of the original matrix a and once we have developed the cofactor matrix of a we can transpose it so once we transpose the cofactor matrix of matrix a then the resulting matrix will be the adjoint of matrix A. I would recommend you going through this exercise is essentially the same. The difference is that rather than determining the cofactors of A transpose, we are determining these cofactors of the matrix A and then putting it in the cofactor matrix, making sure that we handle the signs properly, as I've explained to you previously, so 1 plus 1 is an even number so we'll keep positive so you can see I had minus 13 over here so minus 13, minus 13 will go as is a12 was minus 21 but because it results in an odd number 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 so we have to add a negative sign to it so when you add a negative to 
minus 21, it results in 21, and so on and so forth. So you complete this cofactor matrix of matrix A, and then you take the transpose of it. And once you take the transpose of that matrix, it will result in the adjoint of A, which is similar to what we did uh, in the previous uh, on the previous slide. The difference is that on the previous slide, we first created the cofactor matrix of the A transpose rather than the cofactor matrix of the actual matrix A. Okay, so either way, you're going to end up with the same result. Problem number eight is building on the previous problems and it is asking us to find the inverse of this matrix that we've been dealing with so far. Once you have calculated the adjoint of the matrix and the determinant of the matrix, calculating the inverse is a pretty simple task. So you take the adjoint of A and divide it by the determinant. So we'll end up with these individual entries and we simplify them and this will basically result in the A inverse. Now, as you can see, calculating adjoint required a lot of calculation. Calculating the, the determinant of matrix A also required a lot of calculations because this is a three by three matrix and you can use the same process for a four by four or a six by six matrix and it will get more and more cumbersome. So that's why for a two by two, even for a two by two matrix, I would recommend you to make use of the features that are provided in your calculator so that you can cross check your work. And if you are comfortable enough with using the calculator, then maybe just punch in the matrix entries in the calculator and go about calculating the determinant and the inverse and the adjoint, all those um, all these necessary um, items through the calculator. In this lecture, we learned about matrix inverse and defined what its determinant is, what the adjoint is, and what the cofactors are. And we did a bunch of practice problems in order to apply this learned knowledge. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES F Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well reviewed course comes with an amazing 30 day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 